You might think there are other gigantophones better suited for a comparison with LG's latest curvaceous phablet. Phones with truly massive footprints, like the HTC One Max, Samsung Galaxy Mega, or Nokia Lumia 1520. But that's not what people are searching for. People want to know how the G-Flex stacks up against what many see as the crown jewel of the phablet world, Samsung's Galaxy Note 3. And who are we to argue with the masses? Some might call that SEO optimization. Others might call it gaming the system. We call it giving the viewers what they want. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is LG G Flex versus Samsung Galaxy Note 3. They're not Apple products, but each of these big devices is thinking different in its own way. We'll get to the obvious thing in a minute, but first, let's talk materials. The Note 3 breaks from Samsung's traditional glossy glazed plastic with a soft, faux leather back cover rimmed with stitching and augmented with pretty nice imitation metal, a combination we praised in our full Galaxy Note 3 review. By contrast, the G Flex sticks to a shiny, very slippery plastic that holds onto dust with a mysterious static-like force. This is a material choice we don't especially like, but it carries a hidden benefit a urethane-like coating capable of healing minor scratches automatically. This is a first-of-its-kind innovation in mobile, and for more detail, check out our G-Flex self-healing video here on our channel page, and then subscribe to Pocket Now, where we tube, tweet, and text so you don't miss future videos. Enough dancing around, let's get to the real hardware difference here. Where the Note 3 lies as flat on a table as nearly any other modern smartphone, the G-Flex doesn't. That's thanks to the 700mm radius curve LG built into the hardware, a curve that sweeps from top to bottom and makes the act of using the phone quite distinctive, from talking to texting to pocketing. Combined with the rear-mounted power volume keys and the massive curved 6-inch display, it makes the G Flex stand out a bit more, and it also goes a little ways toward compensating for its larger footprint. While neither of these is a small phone, the Note 3 is definitely the easier device to use one-handed, thanks to its smaller display. Note that that's smaller, not small. The Note 3's screen is a 5.7-inch Super AMOLED panel at 1080p resolution, an excellent display, with an embedded Wacom digitizer to serve as the S Pen stylus. The G Flex's P OLED panel is larger at 6 inches, but it steps down to 720p to accommodate the curve, and to preserve an RGB stripe subpixel arrangement. That's a hefty drop in pixels per inch, and the whites aren't nearly as clean on the LG device. Now, will ordinary folks notice the G Flex handicap without putting these phones side by side? Probably not. It's a lovely display standing alone, and its curved construction makes video and gaming a bit more immersive than the Note's flat panel. But in raw specs, if you care, the Flex's screen is definitely the loser in this comparison. Elsewhere in specs, the devices are more evenly matched. They pack the same Snapdragon 800 chipset with the same GPU and the same 32 gigs of storage, or 64 on the Note 3, if you're a baller. Battery capacity is similar as well. The Note 3, though, edges out the G Flex on the spec sheet with those traditional Samsung value adds. Its battery is removable. Users can augment its onboard storage with an optional microSD card, and it packs 50% more RAM. That makes the Note 3 the more versatile choice for the truly hardcore power user, or the person who just wants to brag more. And much as those power users might hate to admit it, leveraging the awesome hardware of these devices out of the box requires a third-party UI. Stock Android may be cleaner and more responsive than any manufacturer skin out there, but these custom UIs allow for some pretty neat tricks. On the Note 3, the more useful of those add-ons revolve around multitasking. Samsung's Galaxy line has always offered the best side-by-side -side app experience on mobile, letting you use the big display for more than one task at once. Thankfully, LG isn't ignorant to the added utility of this feature, and the company included similar functionality in the G Flex. It's not quite as mature as Samsung's offering, meaning it doesn't support as many apps, but it works well with the titles it does support. 
And in concert with LG's additional, albeit less useful, multitasking paradigms, it allows the G Flex to keep pace with the Note 3, the traditional victor in this department. For sheer versatility, though, the Note 3 has an ace up its sleeve, or more properly, a stylus up its silo. The S Pen isn't for everyone, but even if you're not a memo maker or a doodle drawer, the stylus is handy, even just as a more comfortable input method. It's not just a throwaway added for kicks, but a well-thought-out addition that makes using the Note 3 a distinct and pleasurable experience. Overall, if you can get used to one of these interfaces, you can get used to the other. Sure, there are minor advantages in each corner, responsiveness and customizability on the Flex, and sheer feature count on the Note 3. But really, Samsung and LG have crafted very similar platforms here, and each serves its respective device well. Each of these phones has been through PocketNow's full review battery, so we've been able to draw some conclusions using each on AT&T's network over the course of weeks, in the case of the Flex, and months, in the Note 3's case. Call quality is solid on both devices, though we preferred the sound quality on the G Flex, and so did our callers. The Flex also boasts the louder, bassier external speaker, as this clip from the PocketNow Daily demonstrates. Now raise your hands, all of you fans of the PocketNow Weekly Podcast. I know a ton of you love Michael Fisher's show every single week. We've got the Daily for news, but then the Weekly goes in more extensively to the hottest news of the week. We've got great guests coming in every single week, so make sure you follow links in the description to follow more of the PocketNow Weekly. And you won't be left wanting for bonuses in terms of the cameras on these phones. Each one is a 13-megapixel sensor driven by feature-packed software. Samsung's results tend to be a bit more vibrant indoors, with richer colors in medium light. Though in harsher lighting, the Samsung camera tends to wash out a bit more easily. It's also tough to get a stable shot on each in a moving situation. Both phones are big, and neither features optical stabilization. In very dark settings, the Flex injected more light into the scene, but at the expense of LG's characteristic purple noise. While the Note 3 didn't get quite as bright, it produced more realistic colors. Outdoors, the similarity returns, with the Flex producing slightly warmer tones, but overall the two phones are quite comparable in terms of stills. In video, as long as you're shooting in 1080p and not the Note 3's 4K recording mode, similarities persist. You don't want to use either of these while you're walking around, as the image jumps quite a bit even at normal walking pace, but the results are pretty similar indoors. Oh, man. Here it is. Oh, man. Backstop candle. Same deal in outdoor lighting. While the G Flex provides a wider angle, colors, sharpness, white balance, and even audio capture are all comparable here. But how long will each phone last while you're doing all this? Well, as always, results will vary from person to person, but we're happy to report that the answer, in each case, is a long time. The G Flex features probably the most impressive endurance we've ever encountered, routinely delivering six plus hours of screen on time per charge. But the Note 3 is no slouch either, and its battery is user swappable for replacements in the field. So either way you go, you're gonna get a smartphone that you don't have to be afraid to use often. The LG G Flex and the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 are both top of their class devices. And while usually a phablet comparison ends up with the feature-packed Note 3 walking away with the trophy, here it's a little less clear. Which one works best for you depends, well, on where you live, of course. The G Flex is only available in Asia for now. But it also depends on what kind of person you are. That means those of you who value call quality, battery life, novelty, and innovation will probably prefer the G Flex. While those who appreciate expandability, raw feature count, and the best stylus experience a modern mobile device can bring you should go for the Note 3. And whichever one you select, congratulations. You've just bought a killer smartphone.
Before we go, I want to give a special thanks to the folks at Negri Electronics who provided one of the two G-Flex loaner units that made this video possible. LG provided the second. Thank you to them. And thank you also to AT&T who provided the Galaxy Note 3 used in this video. Folks, follow us at all the links down below. Uh, drop us a like if you did enjoy this comparison and check out the full review on each of these devices available at pocketnow.com. Also, if you don't listen to the Pocket Now Weekly podcast, please listen this week. We are uh, seeking a nomination for a stick Stitcher Award, and please check out that link. We'll drop that in the description down below. That's enough of me talking, folks. Thank you so much for watching this comparison. Drop us some feedback in the comments below if you have something to say, and we'll see you very soon.